It took a few years, but Captain America has finally become the same iconic leader of the Marvel Universe on film as he has been in the comics for decades. Civil War stands poised to deliver the most world-changing story in the MCU yet, but that doesn't mean every great detail, secret, or twist takes place in front of the cameras. There's no better time to run down some of the coolest facts about Marvel's Captain America and to let fans appreciate the chaos and war behind the scenes. This is Know Your Movies, and here are 20 Captain America secrets for behind the scenes. Ending the War The Civil War comic series had to be changed for the movie, but in a weird twist of fate, it's Avengers director Joss Whedon who actually deserves credit for the comic's climactic ending. Originally, Iron Man and Cap stopped fighting when bystanders begged them to, making the fight an unsatisfying draw. The writers knew a more satisfying finish was needed, so when Whedon came by taking a break from his own X-Men series, they told him their problem, and he gave them their new ending exactly as it appears. Or in the words of writer Mark Miller, the bugger went there 10 minutes and he solved everything. Red Wind The Falcon has upped his game since the Winter Soldier, having added a recon drone to his arsenal which he refers to as Red Wind. The name is a nod to his actual trained Falcon sidekick from the comics, since the directors figured a bird he can telepathically communicate with would be too hard to believe. Community alums The Russo brothers may have taken the reins of the Marvel Universe. The duo made sure to give cameos to some friends and community alums in The Winter Soldier, with DC Pearson, a friend of Donald Glover, and Danny Pudi nabbing tiny roles. In Civil War, it's actor Jim Rash who gets the nod, playing yet another annoying intellectual vying for Tony Stark's attention. Launching Ant-Man When the trailers highlighted the airport showdown between the Avengers, it was Ant-Man and Hawkeye combining their powers with the archer firing Scott Lang into action on the end of his arrow. It's a great idea and one lifted straight from the cover of the Avengers number 223, released in 1963. Sharing the spotlight Although it's a Captain America movie, Civil War is pulling double duty, introducing both Black Panther and the new Spider-Man, but that wasn't the original plan. Panther's role was added to the story and made an even bigger part when Marvel thought that Sony might not agree to let Spidey into the MCU. By the time a deal was reached, Panther had a serious part, which meant Spider-Man's role had to be a smaller one, but that's still hard to actually complain about. Audition tapes. Spider-Man and Marvel's Punisher aren't likely to cross paths on film, but the actors already have. While filming the independent movie Pilgrimage, actors Tom Holland and John Bernthal actually recorded audition tapes for Marvel together, hoping to land the roles of Spider-Man and the Punisher respectively. When Holland joined Chris Hemsworth's In the Heart of the Sea, he asked the Avenger to put in a good word, sealing the deal as Bernthal joined Daredevil. Signing on RDJ The original plan for Civil War was to have Robert Downey Jr. make a small appearance, but knowing the story potential, he had his sights set on a much bigger role, which meant a much bigger paycheck. Having already delivered a massive paycheck for the Avengers, the CEO of Marvel Entertainment, Ike Perlmutter, refused the idea. Marvel Studios boss Kevin Feige eventually convinced the higher-ups that it really was the way to go for Civil War, and the entire structure of Marvel's movie and entertainment chains of command were shifted as a result. Sneaky Double Cast It's an unspoken but official rule that no actor can play two different characters in the Marvel Universe. When Robert Downey Jr. suggested his former co-star Alfred Woodard for a smaller role in Civil War, nobody checked with the TV side of the MCU. Having already been cast as a completely different character in Netflix's Luke Cage series, Woodard introduces one of the MCU's biggest wrinkles so far. A real ship Cap showed he'd adapted to modern military when he single-handedly took down a satellite-launching ship in the Winter Soldier's opening scenes. The action is staged, but the ship isn't. It really is a ship used to launch satellites from the equator. When the production got access to the vessel, the entire subplot involving satellites was added to make the most of it. Aging Peggy Carter There's a good chance that some fans never realized that the elderly Peggy Carter really was Peggy, as in actress Hayley Atwell. It wasn't makeup either, or CG aging, but a combination of both. Atwell performed the scene in costume in a grey wig, and an older actress performed the same lines and movements. Digital artists then took the skin and muscle movements from the older woman, pasted them onto Atwell, and massaged them into the finished effect. Chase Scene The Nick Fury chase scene through the city streets was a hit with fans because it actually seemed realistic, but they didn't know just how realistic it was. The scene was based on a 2010 Brazilian police chase that looks exactly the same, and the directors even played the police video as part of their original pitch to Marvel. Widow's Plot Hole Black Widow's showdown with the Winter Soldier ended with her getting the upper hand, but it originally would have caused a massive plot hole. The plan was for Widow to put her shoes beside a car to ambush the villain, but when Scarlett Johansson pointed out that her character would be barefoot for the rest of the movie, the directors realized the mistake and used the phone instead. Brubaker's Cameo Steve and Bucky's reunion lifts a few images right from the comics, but that's not the only tribute that Marvel paid to writer Ed Brubaker, who penned Bucky's return as the Winter Soldier. Look closely and you can catch Brubaker's cameo as one of the technicians overseeing Bucky's brainwash. Smelly Locations Marvel tends to find unique locations for their films, but none is stranger than Nick Fury's hideout. The cement bunker is actually an old sewage treatment plant that was a perfect backdrop when location scouting was done in the winter, but when the crew arrived to film in the summer, the warmer temperatures brought the smells to life. Luckily, the audience can't tell, but the cast sure could. 
Director Cameo. Sometimes it takes a director, not an actor, to know just what a tiny role needs to deliver. That or they just want a cameo when it fits. Make sure you don't miss Nick Fury's doctor giving Widow some treatment, since it's director Joe Russo playing the part. Scrawny Soldier It's still incredible to see how digital artists turned Chris Evans into a scrawny soldier in the first Avenger, but they had some help from his small-scale body double, Leander Dini. Fans don't need to go digging either. The nickname Skinny Steve appears in the film as the bartender serving Cap in his howling commandos. Evans and Johansson By the time The Winter Soldier came around, actors Chris Evans and Scarlett Johansson had appeared together in four different films, the earliest being 2004's The Perfect Score. The two were so familiar as friends, they actually wrote large portions of their own dialogue, drawing from their own personalities. Fake Headstone It turns out the history of Nick Fury is a secret even to the directors. When the former S.H.I.E.L.D. director's birth date couldn't be shown, the directors needed to put something on his fake headstone at the end of The Winter Soldier. Remembering a certain Bible verse made famous by Samuel L. Jackson in Pulp Fiction, their problem was solved. The Winter Soldier Everyone knows that Marvel loves to keep their secrets, but apparently that includes the actors too. Sebastian Stan was probably a bit confused when he was told that he'd be appearing in The Winter Soldier, but had signed on for nine film appearances after the first Avenger. It wasn't until the sequel was announced as The Winter Soldier that he realized he would be playing the villain of the movie, paving the way for an even bigger role in the MCU. Cap's Shield Director Joe Johnson first brought Cap to the big screen, but he made sure to do some spy work in a local comic book store during pre-production. When he asked the clerk what was the most important to get right about the hero, the man claimed it was the shield, certain that a movie would upgrade it with guns or electrical attacks instead of keeping it simple. As a joke, Johnson included those exact versions for Cap to choose from, hoping the fans would be groaning and rolling their eyes before Cap spotted his classic weapon hiding underneath the table. Those are some of the cooler secrets and stories for behind the scenes of Marvel's Star Spangled Hero. But what cool details have we missed? Let us know what you think in the comments, and remember to subscribe for more videos like this one.